Okay, welcome to chapter eight, Excel, valuation models. So the first thing we're gonna look at is summary of forecast statistics for this universal office furnishing companies. So here we have the annual growth rate in sales. So this is the fiscal 2016, and then it's forecasted 2017, 2018, 2019, all the way to 2024. And then we have here, we have our net sales, uh, then we have our profit margin, multiplying our net sales by the profit margin, we get our earnings per share. So first let's uh, forecast the sales. So to do this, we're gonna take last year's sales and we're gonna multiply that by one plus the rate of growth. And we get this number and I can copy easily copy this across. And then this will be a sales growth for each of the years moving forward uh, based on this level of growth. Now the net uh, the net profit percentage is given to us is forecasted. So the net earnings, the uh, net after tax earnings is gonna simply be this number, the new forecasted sales times the earnings per share. And then we can just move this over. Now the um, common stock shares outstanding to get our earnings per share. We're going to take our net earnings divided by our outstanding shares. And we're going to get this is would be our earnings per share. And let's open it up. And then we can move this over. We get all our earnings per share out to the end of 2024. And then we have our payout ratio of 6%. So our dividend is going to be our earnings per share times our payout ratio. And make sure we open this up because the other rounds, uh, so 32 cents, so we can see our payout ratio, move that forward. And then our earnings per share. So here we're simply going to just bring it down from here, our earnings per share. And then our times our PE ratio. So this is our estimated PE ratio moving forward. And we're just going to take this, multiply it by this, and this will be our estimated new stock price. So we'd be predicting, first fill these in, and then we'd be predicting where our share price will end up in 2024. Uh, so this is a little bit more about the formulas we're using here. So pretty easy. So this is how you would, something you'd use to forecast. Um, Take your actuals if you have a couple key pieces of information, you can forecast that forward to get your new stock price. Okay, so let's look at growth rate. How do you calculate a growth rate? Now let's make this bigger so you can see. Okay. So here I left a, a little note here. Use the rate function in Excel to calculate the growth rate. So here we're going. So here we're gonna use the under formulas function, insert rate function, and I get this nice formula builder. So do the n per, I'm gonna do the most current year minus the oldest year to get my n per, which is really just the number of years which we have is here is five. And the payment, there is no payment. The present value is gonna be B3. We're gonna put a negative value here to calculate um, B3. And then the future value is going to be uh, B8. And I can already see it's giving me a result down here. I'm gonna hit okay, we're done. And I get my rate. So this is the annual growth rate of the dividend. So if you have a problem that's asking you to calculate the annual growth rate of the dividend, it's right, uh, you have to get your dividends and you can see the dividends are growing at 5.42% to get from 106 to 138 from 2010 to 2015. Okay, so that I'm gonna move on. The rest of these you could easily do based on that model. And we're gonna look at, here's some valuation models to go over. Let's make these bigger. Okay, so first is the constant growth. And this is why the, the growth rate, see this R here, uh, and G, G is the growth rate of the dividend. That's what we're basically calculating here, the growth rate or G. So this is, if you're, if you're given a series of dividends, you can calculate the growth rate. And because that's used, this growth rate G is used in these models. So the first model, the constant growth rate is simply um, D1 divided by 
uh, the required rate of return minus the growth rate. And then I calculate it. We get, this should be a, a dollar amount. So we're going to go here, say currency, and then put it over here. And then we could just move this all the way down. Simple. Okay, figure that out. Now, for calculating uh, the constant growth here, delete this cell. Okay, so we want to calculate the constant growth rate. The uh, first thing we have to do is calculate D1. So we have D0, and to calculate D1, we have this formula here, 1 plus G times D0. So I'm basically saying, I'm going to start the formula. Open parentheses, 1 plus G, the growth rate, times D0. So it's basically saying is D, the 225 is going to grow by 8%, so it gets 243 to get to D1. To get to D2, you would just kind of repeat that and move that forward. So it's dividend in year zero, the dividend paid right now, and this is dividend in year one. So to get the stock price, we go back and use the same formula here, which is the constant growth model. This is still the constant growth model, but what if you only have D0 and you need to calculate D1? And so again, we're going to take d1 and we're going to divide by r minus the growth rate and this would be and i can just copy this format here and i can pull this over it won't work until i have all the d0 the d1s filled in okay the zero growth model is the simplest model it's just a dividend divided by the required rate of return which is r so this says k but R is also, K is another uh, variable for required rate of return. Okay, and we can just get that format down here and pull this across. So I'll just put in parentheses, K. Now the PE ratio model here, what we're going to do is we're going to take the, we want the estimated earnings per share. So if we take, here's last year's earnings per share, the expected P-E ratio, and the estimated earnings per share. So to calculate the estimated earnings per share, we're going to take uh, last year's and multiply that by 1 plus the growth in earnings per share. And now that we have our new amount here, we can do our, our stock price. So we're going to take the estimated earnings per share times the expected PE. So estimated earnings per share times the expected PE, and we get our new stock price. Since both of these are currency, we'll put them in currency, and we can move this across. Highlight them together and drag them across. So it fills in all those buckets there. Okay, so the required rate of return, this is a recap from, from a couple chapters ago. And what we're calculating here is R, which is required rate of return, or I just triple R here, required rate of return. So here we're gonna take the um, risk-free rate. I'm gonna add that to the beta multiplied by the market return minus the risk-free rate. And I need another parentheses here. So it's an auto fix and you can just pull this across. So those are our valuation models. Let's move into our valuation models part, part two. Now keep in mind there's also this set of equations here that you can use that are from the textbook that I put in here that if you want to look at, you can go ahead and look at these are the different equations from chapter eight that we're going to be working with in this chapter. So some of them I put in here as well. Let me just move these around so a little bit more visible. So you see where they're coming from. Okay. So I'm going to try to make this bigger. So it's a little bit more legible. Okay. This is the variable growth rate here. 
Okay, so this is the variable growth rate model. Here's basically what we're trying to do. So this is the formula here. So we have our years. So let me just, I can make this column a little smaller here. So what I'm going to try to do here is let me just move these in a little bit. So I left some comments in the cells. Make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so this is the variable VGM variable growth model problem one. So we have years one through four. We have our dividend. Um, for each of the years, so this is this would be D0, D1, D2, D3, D4. We have our required rate of return. And we have our growth rate, not for year zero, but for the years, the growth rate moving forward. And then we have our present value of the dividends. So the present value here has already been calculated for you. And I use the present value function that you may have remembered from chapter four. So I found the present value of each of these dividends discounted for the, um, we're using the discount level of the reason dividend and C4 and six as the, the growth, the required rate of return is a dividend rate. Okay. So here is the, so we did the present value of these dividends. So first box here is up here. So it says, what's the sum of the present value of cash flows from year one through three? So I see, I just kind of spell out how this is calculated here. I could also just do a sum equals sum. Click that. And I just want to click these three cells. So we got 743 is the present, the present value of uh, years one through three for the dividend. Now the discounted stock price, I'm sorry, stock price in year four. So I put a little note here, a stock price in year four is going to equal um, the fourth year dividend divided by R minus G. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the fourth year dividend, equal the fourth year dividend here, and we're going to divide by 11 minus three. And this is basically the, you know, the uh, constant growth rate formula to calculate the stock price. So our constant growth rate is 11. So I'd use the constant growth rate formula. That's what we're doing there. Bring this in. Okay. So step four, disc, um, discounted stock price. So here the discounted stock price is going to be the stock price in year four. Uh, and then we're going to discount it to um, using the present value function. But here we actually, I'm actually writing out the discounting. So we're going to say year four stock price. And then we're going to divide by 1.11 because of the growth rate. That's our going to be our discount rate to the exponent of three. And that's going to equal 3273. I could also do um, formulas function. So we're going to use, um, no, we don't want rate. I want to use, close this, sorry, present value. So the rate would be the discount rate. N per would be three years. And then the future value is going to be this amount here. So it's a year four. And then if I, now this is gonna be, it's gonna come up negative. So I can just say, I'll make this a negative here to balance it out and say done. So you see by using the present value formula, I get to 3273 as well, but I just use the straight out present value uh, mathematical formula here. And then 11 is gonna be the valuation the valuation of the stock price. So we add the present value of the cash flows to the discounted stock price to calculate the stock valuation. So in this example, I'm going to use equals the present value of the dividends. I'm going to add that to the present value of the stock price, the discounted value of the stock price. And this becomes the valuation of the stock. 
So this again is the variable growth model. And you can try the same exact problem down here. And, and again, these formulas and equations are in the textbook. So this is just, you know, how I would use Excel to calculate the variable growth uh, model. Okay. All right, so leave off here the equations if you want to look through here to kind of see any of the things that I'm doing in this chapter. I put these equations back here, and that would be my quick explanation for Excel homework for investments chapter eight. And as always, you should, you know, work alongside with the book and kind of troubleshoot this as you go. Thank you. Take care.